it it's mo Ooh, that was loud and again the camera the selfishness ah, 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 ah. i humbly apologize there are some people who said they think i would learn but those people are wrong YouTube. YouTube. Welcome back. This is going to be a really interesting episode, and it's not something we've done before, because we are now taking our two language families. So, Call, season one of Conlang with me, and Sakrat, season two of Conlang with me, and we are starting to put them on a bit of a collision course, because the intention with these was always that they live in the same universe. And if they live in the same universe, couldn't they have effects on one another? And indeed, I think that's exactly what they're going to have. And so today, our task is to decide what the nature of the contact between these two language families is going to be. I think we'll start with one language from each family, and we can, we can expand it from there. Uh, but the eventual goal will be to create a, uh, a pigeon uh, and maybe a Creole language um, that that combines aspects of, of a Sakrat language and a Kal language. Um, but I think uh, I should probably define um, some terms a little bit uh, before we go on. So, so pigeons and Creoles, um, these are kind of tricky terms, and I'll, I'll use them in a, a sort of more or less uh, loose sense. So I'll start with a pigeon. I think it's important to to note that this is an area where specialists get into arguments about all the time, so don't uh, expect the final word here by any stretch. Uh, but essentially a pigeon language is a language with no native speakers. It's a language that is used to communicate uh, between people who don't share a common language. Uh, and so it's a language that develops in these these contact situations. Uh, a Creole language is similar to a pidgin, but it has native speakers. And the precise boundary between the two um, is debated, blah, 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 academic stuff. Um, but for our purposes, uh, we could think of the Creole as what happens when um, the speakers of a pidgin have children and then the children start to speak that pidgin natively and it becomes uh, a creole and um so that's the basic model that we're going to to use um so we're gonna have to engineer a situation and this is going to get into some con worlding stuff about how the speakers of a sakrat language and the speakers of um a call language came into contact we might have to to do a little bit of world building, a little bit of history uh, writing, and then we're going to do uh, a kind of um, essentially a mashup. Yeah, and it's it's true that it's not always one, you know, two languages. It's, I'm giving a very 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 simplified version. Um, as as Quinn points out, it's often it's often multilingual. All right, so, and you know, because <laughs> because I am. Um, mindful of the, the 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 literature around it, it is a particularly controversial area um, in linguistics. The precise definitions of these things, and so let's content ourselves with a, a surface level understanding. Um, not something I usually say, but for now, I think it's it's better for all of us if we do that. So at least it gives us a way to to move forward. Uh, and yes, we've got some good uh, context coming in from the chat who are who are braver than I am and want to um, explore some of the more in-depth aspects. But our work today is to figure out which languages would be most interesting uh, to put into uh, contact. So, oh my goodness, that's such a nice thing to say, uh, Pataku93. Thank you so much. You've gotten to <laughs> Avalot makes cowards of us all. Avalot certainly makes a coward of me. Um, I'm glad you find it helpful and inspiring. That, that is, makes my day. Um, so yeah, I, I, you've been talking to me. You've been seeing my washed-out face for too long. So let's um, let's scoot over to the side webcam. 
All right, so we have, um, let's go over and just get a, a bird's eye view of some of the Sakrat languages. And let's unhide some columns. And let's just look at the things that we have made. So we just last week started on um, branch A, which is taking a bit of a different route. So I'll, I'll get to that afterwards. Um, we have a few more or less uh, developed phonologies, at least, in, in the Sakrat family. We have mi, which is a monosyllabic tonal language with um, a very restricted, a re very restrictive uh, syllable shape. Um, the syllable structure of mi is basically CV with um, with nasal uh, an optional nasal coda. Um, we can also have glides in the coda, but basically nothing else. Everything else got shipped off and turned into tones. Um, so that's me. Me also has extensive tone sandhi and is uh, great fun to write poetry in. Next we have Sasyut. Sasyut is another monosyllabic tonal language. It's closely related to me. Um, it has the difference. Uh, it has a fewer tonal contrasts um, associated with it, ex expressed in it, uh, than does me. But uh, its tone sandhi system is less extensive than Ming's. Uh, what else is interesting about Sasyut? Um, Sasyut has allows more um, diverse syllable structures as well than does me. And we haven't written any poetry in Sasyut yet. Uh, what else? We have the language um, Pquak, which I love <laughs> just because of the name. It's named after the chicken, uh, which I believe will end up being a very important animal to these people. And um, it is so far not tonal, although it has, um, it, it's mo, Ooh, that was loud. Um, this is a metal desk. Um, it is mostly monosyllabic, but it has actually innovated some minor syllables back that have been lost in the uh, in the in the history of of the the B languages of which Quack is one. I'll briefly show you how that worked. Um, so from the proto form Lupit, we get um, in proto B, we get Lupit. So we get the, the minor syllable starting to to lessen. And then by proto B2, which is the ancestor of Pequak, we get uh, that minor syllable dropping out altogether. So the schwa is lost and we get secondary articulation on the constant cluster. Um, then in we go down the uh, down and through history, the cluster, um, the secondary articulation gets put onto the vowel and we get these constant clusters like LP, these initial consonant clusters which get repaired in that, that difficult sequence gets repaired in Pequak, which is a descendant of proto B2A. So we go from Lupuit to Opuit. So we, this L vocalizes to O. Yeah, yeah, I, I realized that soon. <laughs> um, why am I always putting myself first? I don't know. It's a selfish. It's it's a selfishness that you see nowadays, and and really, it's 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 a shame. So this happens with um, these initial L consonant clusters, which vocalize to O. Uh, it also happens with these yod initial clusters, which vocalize to A, and it happens in a bunch of in a few other situations. R initial clusters vocalize to A. Um, so L and W actually vocalize to O, Y vocalizes to A, and R vocalizes to A. So that's how we get things like Aswad, um, which actually sounds kind of unfortunate now that I say it out loud. Um, what's going on with Mnual? 
good question. Wow. Let's ah, so we have the proto form. Well, we have the proto form munal. Then we lose the minor syllable, get the secondary articulation to munal, and then we push off the secondary articulation onto uh, into a glide. Actually, in the case of quack, so I don't think it is actually a descendant of proto b two a. Um, we get a we get the glide thrown off, and then we get vocalization of the coda l. And again, the camera, the selfishness. Ah, ah. I humbly apologize. There are some people who said they think I would learn. But those people are wrong. So that's how we get a form like Nwau in Pquak. Uh, so that's a fun one. Um, do we have any other... We have... Oh, we have this form CA, which we haven't actually played very much with. Um, but it has some interesting metathesis. Uh, let's see if I can find any. So we have, oh, this is really cool. So here's one, Nzlor. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm blanking on what happened in this one, but here's what happened. We have, whenever we have a, a stop minor syllable, actually, I think it's only a voice stop minor syllable, it nasalizes. Um, it nasalizes to a, a, a home organic nasal so we go from dipan meaning sand to nipan so first of all it just nasalizes so from dipan to nipan and then the vowel drops out and the nasal becomes homorganic so from nipan to mban so we get these pre-nasalized stops um, and then what happens in the case of something like Daram going to Mram uh, is <laughs> I don't exactly know if it's the most naturalistic thing in the world, but uh, it's a bit of dissimulation before uh, before sonorance. So the so Naram is going to become Mram. D daler Naler Mler. That's the idea. So that's. That's the kind of cool stuff about CA. We haven't worked much with it yet, so it doesn't have a name. Um, so those are some options. Then there's also branch A. So this is kind of a little guided tour of the Sakrat languages. Um, branch A is one that we started working on last time, which seems to be reorienting itself into a VSO structure. And also reorienting itself into more of a, um, an agglutinative language. Not a, a proper agglutinative language. It's not going to have huge, excuse me, huge, uh, huge sequences of affixes. But it is starting to acquire affixes. And particles that showed up before, um, before uh, say, a verb in the, uh, the proto-language are now showing up as suffixes on the verb. So we have um, agirak, the one who wins, so relative particle and the verb win, shows up as giraka in branch A. And then we'll do fun stuff to that. Um, so those are, but we haven't done any real other things to branch A other than mess around with that a little bit. Um, so that is, that's the story of Sakrat. So having heard the story chat, what do you think? Which one do you think we should use as our, um, as one of the two languages to, uh, that will come into contact? I see in the chat, uh, Quain says that CA fits Linodilef's chaotic energy. That's true. All right. Getting vote for CA, CA, CA. Maybe we should spend a little time with CA today then. To, uh, to get to know it a bit better. <laughs> Ship combo says, I don't enjoy VSO. No, wait, I do. Um, enjoy IVSO. Taco93 um, says me. All right. 
All right, I'll I'll leave it. I'll leave the poll up, so to speak, for a, a few more, a few more minutes. But while we're doing that, there's enough interest in um, in C A that I think we should at least work with it a little bit today to give it a name. Um, so why don't we go back and let's see. I like the color too. I like orange is my favorite color. Um, so I'm naturally drawn to CA as well. Um, important question coming from, from Sutton. Is this a super straight or the substrate? I hadn't made a, uh, a decision. So um, the terminology here, super straight and substrate refer to the languages that have, um, so in, in a contact situation, um, often you'll have a case where one language has more sort of social prestige than another. And, um, and in that case, the one that has the higher social prestige is called the super straight and the one that has the lower is called the substrate. Um, so then the question is, would CA, if we were to choose it or whatever other language be the super straight or the substrate, that is up for grabs. Um, I had vaguely thought in my mind that, um, I had vaguely thought in my mind that that the Sakrat language could be the super straight because I had this idea going back to the very, very first episode that Sakrat was founded on an island chain and then um, and then spread out kind of like, um, well, based on, on people migrating from island to island and then there might have been some sort of a, a sea peoples like invasion of uh, the continent where the call languages are spoken and that could result in a, a, a contact situation yeah somewhat somewhat like um somewhat like the situation with polynesian although i'm not claiming that that the sea peoples were polynesian um or perfidious albion so and if 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 they if the um sacred language is spread out by migration to a continent where well, all this, you know, it all depends on what the circumstances of that spread were. If they come over on boats as conquerors, then I think it stands to reason that they would be um, in a super straight position. Since none of this is created yet, we have almost total freedom. Um, but that's the, the vague idea that, that uh, I had come into this with. Okay. They could be the bringers of chickens. They could be called the chicken people in Linnathilef. Big questions, big questions. If we're going to form a pigeon first, doesn't it make sense for multiple groups to be involved? I think that that, that does make, that's often a, a, a common situation, but I think that it's not a necessary situation. Although I am going to put the gigantic disclaimer that I am not in any way even close to an expert on, on, um, Creolistics. I defaulted to the Linda that I left. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I defaulted, to, I defaulted to the Linda that I left because it's the one that I think is most developed and could be most fun to um, to play with. I think also for simplicity's sake, as, as Quain points out, um, we may we may want to stick to two. And Sutton, yeah, Sutton points out that there's an argument that, that three languages are required for a pigeon. But as um, I alluded to earlier, there is basically nothing in, um, in that corner of linguistics that is not argued. <laughs> uh, as far as I know, um, it tends to be uh, controversial, perhaps more so than, than the average question in linguistics. Um, so, okay. Well, I think we've we've moved on from discussing which one um, which one to do. Quanti, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. It is I'm trying to do the calculations and I can't. It must be pretty late in Norway. Um, okay, so let's say that we're going to do language C A as um, as the Sakrat component. We could do, we could do something with Lenadilef and Eustamia, like maybe, and now we're going to have to start doing a bit of world building, but maybe 
Lenovilev and Eustamia have some sort of a, mm, I don't know what we would call it, a relationship, their own sort of social relationship. Like Eustamia is a, excuse me, Eustamia is a, a prestige language um, or like a, maybe a, uh, Eustamia is a prestige language used in religious contexts and Lenovilev is used from day to day or or in one part of the empire, Eustamia is used in one part of the empire, uh, Lenovilev is used. If there is an empire, I'm just making this up as I go along. Um, yeah, so we could have fun with that. In fact, I have I have it in mind as well to introduce some some loans within the call languages. Um, yeah, so what we could do, if we're going to make Sakrat if we're going to make CA, in particular the super straight, uh, we could essentially relexify call as Sutton um, suggests. But if we'll look at call, for instance, um, so let's look at Lenovilev as an example. Uh, relexification of this, this is a rather baroque inflectional system. Um, I do not see a pigeon or a Creole, whatever your theory of how those things work, retaining anything near this level of complexity. Um, because it just tends not to be the case that you have elaborate inflectional systems um, like this. As far as I know, I don't know every everything. <laughs> I feel like I'm saying that more than, uh, more than usual, but it's because this is an area that I've, I just want to be perfectly upfront about my lack of experience in. But from my understanding, we do not see ablaut or anything like that. Non-concatenative morphology, um, large case paradigms um, in, in pigeons and creoles. I know some people have claimed that there are, there's really no inflection or very little. Um, and when there are people out there claiming that, seeing this is out of the question. Okay, so... So if we were to do this, so if our mashup were CA and Lenovilev, we could make a kind of interlanguage version. We could, we could come up with like an interlanguage version of CA as learned by, as imperfectly learned by speakers of Lenovilev. So it would have some transfer effects from Lenovilev. So some things would work similarly to Lenovilev, but it would also have the characteristics of interlanguage, which do not depend on, um, which do not depend on the particular first language, the particular L1. Um, so those are things like putting negation before the verb, um, which tend to show up in the developmental pathway um, in second language acquisition, in a predictable, um, in a predictable sequence. The Putting a negation before the verb is one of the steps in that predictable sequence, which, as far as I know, does not depend on L1. Um, I'm sure there are people who would argue with that as well, but that's my understanding of that. So that's basically the approach. And what we could do is we could also have a, um, a sort of a continuum where we have the Creole and then a... Creole influenced standard language, like a um, a Lenovilevized but more or less standard CA, and then we could have those people who speak CA. Yeah. Okay. All right. I see. I see some good brainstorming in the chat. Um, oh yeah. Oh, okay. I, I should point out phonology is another story. <laughs> phonology. We're gonna have a lot of fun with. Um, with L1 transfer. Yeah, yeah. Queen's throwing out the terms I'm trying to avoid mentioning. <laughs> um, exactly, exactly, Pitaku 93. Something something like that, although, um, you know, I, I wouldn't make the comparison with a Creole in the case of Scots. Um, but, but the same kind of continuum idea. Yeah, and phonology, phonology is going to be influenced by the substrate, yeah. Um, okay, 
Sutton's, Sutton's pointing out something here. Never added the passive case. Didn't I? I thought that, I thought we did. Okay, let's return to that because that's important, but we shouldn't. Okay, so let's, let's return to CA. This is like the most focused episode ever, as you can tell. Um, let's return to CA. Oh, it's in the other spreadsheet. And let's give this a name. Now, the way that we've been naming languages is pretty un... Um, it's pretty... I don't, I don't want to say unrealistic, but um, it's typically not the way that a lot of languages get their names. Um, you know, it's true that a lot of them do get their names from things like speech or real speech or speech of the people. Um, but a lot of times um, the way to the, the way the languages are named are very, very um, convoluted and require a lot of world building. So I think we should probably just stick to our, our simple way of taking a cool word from that language and using it. Um, and then we can retcon better reasons for it later. Uh, so we have our task name CA. So to do this, I'm going to hide these columns. I'm going to even hide C. And I'm going to slowly scroll. <laughs> I'm going to slowly scroll down. And if you see anything cool, let me know. I'm going to point out a few things that I see that I think are cool on the way. I think, I kind of like the this nzlor. I kind of like mrak. Although that might be taken by a, a natlang. Do, do, do. Hmm. Maybe I should just keep it on one part of the screen for a bit and then page down. That's probably easier on the eyes, right? Um, I like krang. I don't know why. It sounds cool. It sounds... <laughs> it sounds fun. I'm seeing a lot of votes for Nzlor. I don't know if anything else can, can catch up at this point. Mies. By the way, I'm not suggesting it, but this is our cognate of me. Uh, so we have mis. It's kind of cool. See so votes for krang, kluk, kranslor. Oh, sotten. Mpram. It's kind of cool. Mm. <laughs> Scam. That's unfortunate. And. Almost at the end now, I think. Krang has no meaning yet. It could be ethnonym. Okay, so that's what we have. <laughs> Bless is a scam. <laughs> yep, basically. Okay, Harbor. I'm looking at the votes, and I think we have a clear winner. Nzlor. Nzlor, which means safety or harbor. All right, so let's use that, but I think we should also put in another another word. I saw um, Sotten suggested, suggested Kranzlor. Kranzlor, that could work, see the harbor. Um, harbor language. Um, harbor, we have speech, right? Which is Sla. So we could put, we could say Sla, Slanslor, but uh, that doesn't roll off the tongue. Kra Slanslor. It just doesn't roll off the tongue for me, I don't know. Krangslor. Krangslor. Maybe maybe nzlor is enough. No, Kranslor sounds better. Alright, I'm I'm with you. I'm always with you, chat. You know it. Except when you disagree and then I can only be with half of you. Um so let's say Kranslor. So C A is now Kra Zlor, which we may end up writing together. Now, this is a um, this is a language in which the um, this is a language in which the um, you can you can tell I'm at the end of the stream. The brain cycles are going down. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. In this family, we have constructions like wind north. So the, the modifier proceed, uh, follows the modified. 
So in this um, in this case, this would be more like the um, the seeing of the harbor, the harbor. Yeah, something like that, right? I don't know. My brain is like is just totally off right now, or the 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 site of the harbor, something like that. We'll we'll come up with a way of thinking about this when my my brain works again. Um, it's a verb phrase that's nominalized. Oh, and I could come, we could think of like a cool folk etymology, where the first time that they came to this one place and they said, ah, I see a harbor and that's why it's called Kranslor. And then the people from Kranslor started to speak differently from everyone else and then they called it the Kranslor language and then ba 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 Something like that. Okay, site of the harbor. I like that. Well done. You see, even when our brains aren't working, totally, totally 100%, things still work out. All right. I'm going to put in a cut for YouTube. I'm going to chat with the chat a little bit afterwards. So that's an incentive, YouTube, for you to come live because then we get to chat about cool things. Um, uh, but I'll put in a cut for YouTube here because clearly my brain is not willing to do very much more today. So YouTube, thank you so much for joining us. I think we've got a good plan. We've got our, our language Kranzlor and we've got Linda Thylef and we're going to see what happens when the two collide. So that'll happen next week. Um, but for YouTube, it will happen probably a lot sooner because by the time we get up to YouTube, they come faster. So YouTube, thanks again, and we'll see you next time.